Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Jessica Kilman, filling in for Eric Boss while he's out on paternity leave. And this is a breakdown of the trailer for Godzilla x Kong, The New Empire. The 2024 follow-up to 2021's Godzilla vs. Kong, 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters, 2017's Kong Skull Island, and 2014's Godzilla. Did you remember there's so many movies? There's so many of them. This film is coming out April 12th, 2024, and this trailer is freaking amazing. So let's break it down for the details that you might have missed. From the beginning, the trailer introduces Warner Brothers and legendary logos to an ominous ethereal singing choir. Wire. This sounds like Requiem, a famous piece composed in the 1960s and used in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. It was also used in the 2014 Godzilla by Gareth Edwards to help sell the eerie otherworldly nature of Godzilla just as Kubrick used it to cue the Black Monolith. Like Godzilla towering over the puny humans, the Black Monolith is a strange thing that is way out of place with the primates in pre-recorded history. Also observe the pink and blue fog, which appears to be a predominant color motif for the movie. The mix of pink and blue, which is not only unusual for kaiju movies, but is being associated with the new kaiju villain that will oppose both Godzilla and Kong. We see a seismic reader. This monitors large levels of movement in the ground like earthquakes and volcanoes, but seeing as this is a Godzilla and Kong movie, it means a titan is probably coming. It might be coming through this section off portion by what I assume is Monarch. We left Godzilla vs. Kong knowing there's a new outpost within Hollow Earth monitoring Kong. We also know from the movies and the series, there's a bit of Monarch outpost stations monitoring and standing by, so this might be one of the many posts around the world just setting up a perimeter to another entrance to Hollow Earth. We then get this beautiful shot of the sun setting over the pyramids and you know damn well a monster's about to mess it all up. There's a rupture in the sand, the poor camels don't even know what to think, and the bricks surrounding the pyramid are engulfed into the dirt. We get a good view of the seismic reader and it's now freaking out just like those camels. Then we get the shot, a new hole to hollow earth with the same blue lighting, flickers in the sand, and out comes Optimus Primal. Nah, but it kind of looks like Optimus Primal in like the hand of Bumblebee's suit. Later it's revealed this could be Kong and his like Thanos gauntlet. But jokes aside, could Monarch have given Kong a new suit of armor? Possibly. This could could be a piece of armor for him to protect himself. The overlapping audio says, what else were we wrong about, girl? everything. EW mentioned Godzilla and Kong will see a killer kaiju's face off against a colossal undiscovered threat that could very well spell the end of days for both man and monster alike. Well, what have we been preparing for? There have been rumors and fake leaks and real leaks that we can maybe expect to see Shimu in this movie and this scene could actually be Kong fighting Shimu who's emerging from the sand and we're seeing the blue light from their crystals. A remix version of Jim Reeves' Welcome to My World, the song was first written by Ray Winkler and John Hathcock. While written as a love song, the song is being used here for a more dramatic effect of reintroducing audience to Hollow Earth, Dimension of Titans ruled by King Kong. We also see King Kong here with those flying monsters we've seen in Godzilla vs. Kong before, and you can see a tiny Kong gorilla running in the distance, but he's being chased by something I can't really make out. It might be the death jackals that we see later. Here comes Kong, quickly landing and running back into the gorilla sprint. Last we saw of him, his fur was a little mangled and just to be expected after, you know, battling Godzilla. So just to note, yeah, he's cleaned up rather down with that old man's beard, and it's been a minute. Then we see this machine flying in, which I don't think we've actually seen before. This could be an upgraded version of the Heave ship from Godzilla vs. Kong, which was closer in resemblance with the Super X and the Super X2 from earlier movies. All this to say, we're time jumping a little, and like all previous movies, the technology is advancing with the time. Then we see the doors opening to a jungle, and on the other side is Eileen Andrews, played by Rebecca Hall, who we saw in the last movie. Behind her is Dan Stevens, who is playing a new character allegedly named Trapper, but according to IMDb, it's Steven Ron Ronda, who could be related to John Goodman's character Bill Ronda in the Apple Plus series Monarch Legacy of Monsters. The series really dives into Bill's history and we learn about his past with his wife helping him find evidence of these titans before a lot of other people did. Then we see a dusty old Kong settled up with his axe and in front of him we see a shadow of another monster. This scene is probably here to show us the Scar King's size. He's the movie's main villain and by the trailer he looks to be a rival of Kong for some time. The shadow shrinks down and turns into this baby gorilla who looks to be related to the Scar King. He's, he's so cute and I feel really bad. I just love little babies. I really like this scene because it implies two partial things. One, Kong could be afraid of this baby turning into what the Scar King is gonna be in the future. Or two, this baby is also trying to get away from the Scar King and Kong is very scared of this battle that should play out soon between him and the evil Scar King. So much can be made from this scene and I'm excited to just see them all fight. But could it be the son of Kong? It could be. A big part of the holidays is food, but that doesn't mean every single night needs to be a 20 course masterpiece. For the nights when you don't really wanna cook, we still want your food to taste like you did, there's Factor. With Factor, you can choose from over 35 chef-crafted meals every week that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, calorie smart, vegan and veggie protein plus, and more wholesome options. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. This month, I got a Factor box and I had like a sun-dried tomato cream chicken that tasted so freaking good. Hey, what the hell is he doing? I don't know. Is he dancing?
you can save the shopping, chopping, cooking, and cleaning for when you've got family in town without sacrificing nutrition or taste. It's a holiday miracle. You can also level up with gourmet plus options and treat yourself to upscale meals with premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code ROCKSTARS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Once again, that's factor75.com or click the link below and use the code ROCKSTARS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box today. In 1933, shortly after the release of the original film, King Kong, RKO Radio Pictures fast-tracked to production a direct sequel of Son of Kong, in which King Kong has a son who's only 12 feet tall and had more affectionate personality. The movie's writer, Ruth Rose, said in an interview about the movie's slightly more comedic change in tone, if you can't make it bigger, make it funnier. But this baby looks sad. <laughs> <laughs> then Trapper says, what is that? And we see a giant red handprint on the edge of a wall, which could be another call out to how big Scar King is and resembles all the movie posters we've been seeing lately. Kong jumps down into this cave of crystals and monkey skulls and the narration says, who could have done this? Personally, I think it's the big old orange one we've alluded to this entire trailer. Then we're taken to this incredible scene that resembles the underground ruins that Kong was in in Godzilla versus Kong, like the temple that he was in. So this might be a place where they worship a different true king, the Scar King. Then we see an array of death jackals chasing Kong, and this is the scene I think that could be the scene that we saw earlier at the beginning of the trailer. We see a large group of people likely indigenous to Hollow Earth. A staple trope in all of the King Kong and Godzilla movies are isolated tribes of people, sometimes alien races, who worship Kong and Godzilla like gods. They may also be Iwi, a tribe of people from the MonsterVerse franchise. In the 2021 film Godzilla vs. Kong, the character Gia, played by Kaylee Hoddle, was an orphan from the tribe who was taken by Eileen Andrews, Rebecca Hall's character. However, most of the Iwi were wiped out, so the tribe here could be survivors of a new tribe tribe we've yet to meet. It looks like the scene also from Godzilla and Megalon, you know, the worship ones. We cut to a scene from Bernie from the last movie, played by Brian Tyree Henry and Trapper, who's wearing the same clothes from previously in the trailer. So Bernie must have been invited on this trip to Hollow Earth. Behind them are men holding spears, so I think these two men are being taken in for questioning. This looks like a giant spine, but it could be a staircase leading out of Hollow Earth or something more divine. We see it later in the trailer. This could be Gia. Also want to know, it looks like she's fading away, like around her hands. Whatever power or light the stairs are emitting, is like taking away something from her. This must be in Brazil. I only note that because of the Brazilian flag at the top of the screen. A giant claw shoots down, almost impaling this woman. This could be Scylla by the spidery appendage. It could be that Titan. Godzilla thaws out of the ice and is now empowered by a strange pink energy. Our big baby hibernating in their ice cave. The colors are pinkish purple with blue tones like the ones from the Kong cave of the skulls we saw earlier. Also, like the colors of the staircase, it's all just coming back full circle. It's been revealed online that this is a step in Godzilla's evolution. He draws his his energy from hollow earth this radiation will give him seemingly new powers and make him just very strong he's also a big fan of barbie just like me then the big baby wakes up and honestly he kind of ate i'm sorry i'm kind of in love with this neon pink i mean like period per but my favorite part of the trailer is the scratching of the seismic reader in the silhouette of scar king on the lonesome freaking throne like this is like sukuna in jujutsu kaisen clearly this means he's coming out of hollow earth and into the real world or just something as big as him is coming. When Skarky jumps down, it terrifies the other, and it's kind of clear he's the one to be feared, especially with this transition to the beach with him horrifyingly standing over the people of Brazil. We see Godzilla readying his new atomic breath and the sound waves reverberating off every spike. I love this scene. We saw him in Godzilla vs. Kong use this, so this one might be just stronger than that one. Then Kong bellows and Godzilla blows the atomic breath and boy, I can't wait. Abruptly, Godzilla jumps out of the ground and Kong falls from the ceiling with the new gauntlet. Godzilla really runs like me for real, and I uh, it's a read. It's a read and a half. The winning trailer shot with both Godzilla and Kong teaming up against a new threat confirms that Kong gets a cool mechanical glove, probably to boost his strength or to maybe heal a wound, courtesy of possibly Monarch. That's it for my breakdown on Godzilla x Kong. Very excited to see my babies fight again. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Lulu underscore Clemens. Follow new rock stars. Subscribe to new rock stars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. See you later.